and welcome. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are warmly welcome to this online service that is brought to you by South Street Baptist Church in Central Exeter and by Brantford Speak Baptist Chapel. As a church, we firmly believe that God values and loves every person and we pray that you will sense that love today. My name is Simon, I'm one of the ministers of the church and just a reminder that during July we have decided that because we want to look after our well-being and because we love to sing we are going to continue to have online services through this month. In our home with having to do lots more hand washing we find we're getting through much more soap I don't know if you are. And we opened a new bar of soap this week. Always feels special opening a new bar of soap. I don't know why. Uh, we opened the bar of soap and uh, carved into the middle of it was the message, keep calm, keep calm. A reassuring message as we wash our hands. But I wonder in this time of anxiety, in this time of uncertainty, where do we find the help, the comfort to help us keep calm? And that's going to be the theme that Ross, our community minister, is going to explore today. Where do we find rest? And he's going to use these well-known words from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so I invite you, whether you're a member of our church family or a friend that we've not yet met, I invite you to come and find rest in the person of Jesus. We open our worship with a song that encourages us to put Jesus at the heart of our lives as we trust in him. Jesus, be the centre. Psalms often speak of finding our rest in God, finding our security and our shelter in God, who is our rock and our refuge. And one psalm that urges us to put our trust in God and find God as our shelter is Psalm 62. And Rob Pearson is going to read some verses from that psalm for us now. Reading is from Psalm 62, reading from verses 5 to 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock 
life and my salvation. I fought for it. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honour. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they grow up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. For you repay to all according to their work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beautiful words there from Psalm 62 about finding our rest, our shelter in God. Well, let's now come in prayer to the God who offers us shelter in Jesus, our Saviour. Let us pray. For God alone my soul awaits. God alone is my hope and my fortress. I shall find rest and security in God. Thank you, Jesus, that all our days are embraced by your never-ending love, and that all our nights are held within the shelter of your love. Come to me, come to me, weak and heavy laden, trust in me. Lean on me, I will give you rest. Loving Jesus, thank you that we can come to you in our need. You know all that worries us. You know all that concerns us. You know what causes us to sorrow and what makes us laugh. Thank you that we can pour out our hearts to you, that we can entrust our lives and all that we care for to you, knowing that your love for us is faithful and that you are leading us into life. Come to me, come to me, weak and heavy laden, trust in me, lean on me, I will give you rest. And we thank you, Jesus, that you want us to know release from fear, from guilt and anxiety. Help us to entrust our lives into your care. Help us to find the path that leads to freedom. Fill us again with the peace that comes from your presence with us. And forgive us, Lord, for the mistakes we have made that have left us burdened with guilt. Forgive us, Lord, for when we have burdened ourselves or others, with unnecessary rules and forgotten that you welcome us as we are. And forgive us for when we have mistaken busyness as a sign of significance and have allowed ourselves to become preoccupied with too much. Come to me, come to me, Weak and heavy laden, trust in me, lean on me, I will give you rest. 
And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer and please use whichever version is most familiar to you. And this week it is led for us by Millie Hallett. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to hear now those verses again from Matthew's Gospel and, and the context within which Jesus spoke them. And our Gospel reading this week is brought to us by Jean Pearson. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Ross, with his trimmed beard, has this week recorded his reflections for us, again from his home in Exeter. I love the title that he has chosen this week, uh, Rest as a Way of Life. Let's now go over to hear his first reflection. Good morning. How are you? How do you feel? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling hurried? Are you feeling ridiculously busy with the to-do list down to the floor? Are you feeling worried, stressed, burdened? I don't know about you, but the conversation um, I most regularly have with people, once I said, how are you? Um, the following line is always, yeah, well, I'm, I'm all right, Ross. Yeah, I'm, I'm busy and, and a bit tired, but I'm all right. It's almost as if people have to say they're busy and tired in order to justify their existence or, or, their, or their purpose in life. If you're not saying those things, people might judge you and, and feel you to be lazy. Why aren't you busy? Why aren't you tired? I find it so sad that when I ask ministers um, how they're doing, and I say that as probably a hypocrite, knowing that I'm one of these people as well, the response is so often, um, yeah, Ross, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. And I always find it interesting they say surviving, as again, if that's a kind of a badge of honour, you can't be thriving or doing really well. You've got to just be getting through just keeping your head above water, just coping with all the hurry and the busyness and the stress. And it's not just applicable to ministers. Um, in my previous church, we really struggled to get volunteers 
people's lives were just so busy. Family commitment, work commitment, um, friends commitment, all manner of things. Um, and they just didn't have time to commit to church or, or, or to commit to church life, if you like. And, and those that were able to volunteer often found that in volunteering for one role, and you all know this, they were then given a million other roles to do, figuratively, obviously not literally, I don't think. But they were busy. They were suddenly given all of these roles from the church as well as their own lives, and they became frustrated and they became disillusioned with church. If this is what following Jesus is like, then, then why bother? I'm so busy and tired all the time. And it's not just applicable to, to working professionals um, who are Christian or, or at church. The thing I find really interesting when I talk to Christians who are about to go into retirement or have been in retirement for a long time is they always laugh and joke with me and say, oh yeah, but there's no retiring in the kingdom of God, is there, Ross? And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, I get that. You keep going and there is no age to, to being able to use, being used and, and, and be able to work for God. But at the same time, I find it interesting that the very same people that often say that line are the same people who find themselves in retirement more busy than they ever were in their professional working lives. Finding in retirement that time where you're able to at least wind down a little bit and relax a little bit more, put your feet up, you've earned it. <laughs> They're more busy now maybe than they ever were previously. Our society fosters and nurtures a destructive cocktail of busyness, hurry, and anxiety. And it's a cocktail that, that I believe we regularly indulge in as Christians and as the church. But interestingly, it's certainly not a cocktail that Jesus would offer or drinks himself, as we see in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. The very opposite applies when it comes to our life in Jesus. He says these beautiful words, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I read these words, the first thing that always strikes me is the invitation and the comfort that that can bring. Come to me. I can almost imagine Jesus with his, with his arms open wide and, and me walking to him, burdened and worried. And I find myself just falling into his arms, feeling his embrace around me and all of the worry and the burden and the anxiety kind of melt away, clasped in Jesus' arms. I feel safe and I feel secure. But Jesus' words aren't just um, a comfort. There's also a call to action in his words. Because as we find comfort in his embrace, finding rest for our souls, in that space, we're told to lay down our yoke and to take his yoke upon us. What does that mean? In the original context, Jesus is talking um, to people who were feeling burdened and, and worn out by the many, 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 many laws of, of, of God, the law of God. Um, but not just the specific laws themselves, but then the, the many rules and, and other polygamy laws that the, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, would place as a kind of hedge around the law of God in order to make sure that no one would ever get close to breaking the law of God. You had to fulfil these millions of other little rules that the, the Sadducees and Pharisees created. And obviously this, this, this came making life very burdensome and, and, and hard to carry. Faith and religion was, was tiring. So the Jewish people um, believed they were yoked to the word of God. It was a kind of um, colloquial phrase which, which talked about submission. Because those that, that, that don't know to be yoked or, or a yoke is, is the wooden beam that would be placed across the shoulders of two oxen. And it would one, keep them together and two, allow them to pull a, a plough behind them. So ultimately these two oxen were then submissive to the farmer because of this, this yoke, this device around their shoulders. And this is where the beauty of Jesus' words become apparent. Because in comparison to the heavy yoke 
um, of the law, Jesus' yoke is easy. Or a better translation would be, it's, it's well fitting. Following him, submitting to him, isn't a burden, isn't a yoke that weighs you down, but it's life-giving. It fits you perfectly. It's fit for purpose. In wearing Jesus' yoke, you want to run. You want to pull that plow because you can, because it fits you just the way it's meant to. It's full of rest and freedom. It's a different way of living. In Jesus, we find rest. How do you feel? Tired? Exhausted? Burdened? Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. We're now going to sing um, a beautiful hymn uh, entitled, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Even if you're at home, wherever you are, let's, let's sing with vigour. I love the words of that hymn, some of them based, of course, upon the reading from Matthew that we had earlier read by Jean. We read these words in the hymn, I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. Beautiful words speaking of the rest and the peace that we find in Jesus. And the hymn, of course, set to a lovely old folk tune. And our thanks to Mary um, for playing such a beautiful accompaniment to it on the flute. Ross has been speaking to us about finding rest in Jesus. And we go now to listen to his second reflection. So we've been exploring um, Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, and seeing that within these beautiful words is a comfort to come to Jesus and to find rest for our souls. But in that comfort, there's also a call to action, that when we find rest for our souls, we're to also lay down our, our yoke that is, is a burden, that is, is heavy, and to pick up Jesus' yoke that is easy, that is well-fitted, that is light, and it's also a call to, to learn from him. That's what we find on later in his words, that we're to replicate his life, learn from him, learn from the way he lived in order that we can discover a life 
that is that is freer, a life that is full of joy, a life that is, is lighter. Eugene Peterson, um, in the message translations, captures something of what I'm saying um, beautifully. He translates Jesus' words in this way. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Eugene Peterson highlights the fact that Jesus is, is calling people to, to look at his life, to learn from the way he lived and to live in accordance. Because in living like Jesus, we discover a life that is free and a life that is light, to live freely and lightly. I don't know about you, but when I read those words, my heart kind of skips a beat. I'm like, yes, that's how I want to live. I want to live freely. I want to live lightly. I don't want to constantly be saying to people, no, I'm so tired. I'm so busy. I'm so worn out. Surely that's the exciting call that we're given when we're asked to follow Jesus, to live freely and lightly. Surely that's a life that people would want to replicate and follow themselves. God, look at, look at those guys. They just seem so alive. They're always so free that they seem to, to glide off the floor. Living freely and lightly, wouldn't that be incredible? John Mark Comer um, has written a brilliant book that myself and Alice and some friends are reading at the moment called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I personally love um, the title. And in that, he takes further something of what we're saying by quoting a guy called Frederick Dale Bruner. Frederick Dale Bruner writes a commentary on Matthew um, and explores Jesus' words that we've been looking at this morning. He says these, these words. But Jesus realises that the most restful gift he can give the tired is a new way to carry life, a fresh way to bear responsibilities. Realism sees that life is a succession of burdens. We cannot get away from that. Thus, instead of offering escape, Jesus offers equipment. Jesus means obedience to his Sermon on the Mount, his yoke, will develop in us a balance and a way of carrying life that will give more rest than the way we have been living. And John Mark Comer um, kind of goes on to elaborate on, on what Frederick um, has said. He says these words, people all over the world, outside the church and in, are looking for an escape, a way out from under the crushing weight of life this side of Eden. But there is no escaping it. The best the world can offer is a temporary distraction to delay the inevitable or deny the inescapable. That's why Jesus doesn't offer us an escape. He offers us something far better, equipment. He offers his apprentices a whole new way to bear the weight of our humanity with ease at his side like two oxen in a field tied shoulder to shoulder, with Jesus doing the heavy lifting at his pace, slow, unhurried, present to the moment, full of love and joy and peace. An easy life isn't an option. An easy yoke is. I love, I love the way that, that John and Frederick and Eugene all capture and interpret Jesus words, that his yoke in being easy, in being well-fitted, isn't an escape from life. He's not saying, come to me, drop all of your problems, and then go back to a worry, worry-free life, a burden-free life. That's not what he's offering, but he's offering a way to cope with the burden and the worries within this life, placing his yoke upon us. We can walk with him, pull the plow together. And I love the image of, of Jesus pulling the heavy work, heavy weight. It almost seems a little unfair, but that's what he's offering. Taking his yoke upon us, he is with us, step by step. We can get through this, but not just get through it. We can find joy, we can find freedom, we can find a lightness to life 
that makes it worth living, a life full of purpose, a life full of hope. So I want to leave you with um, a few questions to reflect on over the week in, in your own quiet devotions or just to chat about with friends or someone you're accountable to. And I'd encourage you to reflect on these questions um, from your life pre-lockdown, before we were all locked in our homes, and but also during lockdown. Have things changed? Are you as busy and tired and stressed um, during the lockdown period? Or have you learned new lessons? Has it taught you new ways to live? Put your priorities back in focus. Maybe put Jesus at the centre again, where you drifted previously. Try and reflect on these questions in, in, in both regards. So the first is how often do you stop and find energy and refreshing in Jesus? Do you have rhythms of, of prayer throughout the day, moments where you can come back to Jesus to find refreshing in him? Question two, how readily are you drinking from society's cocktail of busyness, hurry and anxiety without ever asking the critical questions of why you're living in this way, why you're continuing to drink from that cocktail? And have you ever reflected on the things that you're doing that make you so busy and hurried? Do you ever prioritise the things in your life that give you life rather than the things that make you tired? And question four, does your diligent service to God, the church and his people, feel like a burden? And if so, why? My prayer and hope is that next time someone asks you, hey, how are you? You'll reply, I'm good, thank you. You know what? I'm feeling lighter. I'm feeling freer. Ross there has left us with some really helpful and also quite challenging questions to ponder and encourage you to continue to ponder them in the week to come. Questions about our lifestyle and reminding us that God does not want us to be burdened by religion, by its ritual or by its duties, but to find in our relationship with Jesus freedom and joy. Well, may Jesus guide us and help us to know the rest that is his gift. Let's continue in a spirit of prayer as we pray now for others and for needs in our world. And this week our prayers are led for us by Margaret Jackson. We bring our prayers of intercession to God. I invite you to share in a response during these prayers if you wish to do so. When I pray, Lord, give help and healing, please respond and help us to trust in you. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttles cease to fly shall God unroll the canvas and explain the reason why the dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skilful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned. Loving God, our world and our lives have changed so much in recent weeks. Life sometimes seems so unreal and unnatural, and we often wonder whether life as we used to know it will ever be the same again, confusing and complex and sometimes distressing. When we can only see darkness and despair, Lord, give help and healing, and help us to trust in you. When we sometimes wonder if you really are there, and whether our prayers count for anything at all, Lord, give help and healing, and help us to trust in you. When we grieve for the people of Yemen and Hong Kong and remember the many thousands currently living in refugee camps, unable to return to their homeland because their homes have been destroyed, or those living in situations of dire poverty and disease, Lord, give help and healing and help us to trust in you. 
We thank you for all who have worked tirelessly and sacrificially and who continue to do so, often placing themselves in great danger to care for others during the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for all who have to make difficult judgments and decisions in order to open up our country and our world again. Lord, give help and healing and help us to trust in you. We pray for strength, wisdom and stamina for those who are supporting many people who are suffering greatly, mentally, physically and spiritually, as a result of this lengthy lockdown process. Help us to take comfort from the words of the hymn, and when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, all the sorrow, all the aching, rings with pain the heart of God. Lord, give help and healing, and help us to trust in you. Sustain, we pray, the charities, missionary societies and volunteers worldwide working to provide shelter, food, clean water and health facilities for many desperate people and keep us faithful in our prayers. Lord, give help and healing and help us to trust in you. During times of anxiety and confusion, help us to see you, Lord, in the beauty and wonder of the natural world and in the love, caring and generosity of family, friends and neighbours. In times of anxiety and confusion, help us to believe that you are always with us, our loving God, waiting and longing for us to share our joy as well as our sorrows with you, believing that the dark threads will yet become the gold and silver threads, enabling us to become empowered to live the lives which you call us to live. We cannot see the way ahead, so, Lord, give help and healing and help us to trust in you. We offer these and our unspoken prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A big thank you to everyone who has shared in our service today, for Margaret in leading our prayers of intercession, to Millie for leading the Lord's Prayer. Uh, thank you to our readers today, Rob and Jean, uh, to Ross for such helpful reflections, and all those who've provided our music, not just this week, but of course in previous years, as we, uh, our final hymn is a recording from several years ago. And thank you for being with us on this Sunday service from South Street Baptist Church and Brantford Speak Chapel. As you heard at the beginning, we've decided that we're going to stay online for the month of July. And we hope you'll be with us again next week when we're going to think about the parable of the sower, the good seeds that Jesus is planting. Well, Ross has reminded us of those beautiful words from Jesus. Come to me and I will give you rest. Jesus does not invite us into religious busyness, but into a relationship where he shows us what really matters and helps us to, to live a lifestyle that reflects God's priorities. Jesus does not promise that we will escape hardship or difficulty in life. And indeed, I think Jesus calls us to a life that requires courage. But he promises that through it, he will be with us to be our comfort, to be our strength, to be our rock and to be our guide. We began our service today with a more modern worship song, Jesus Be the Centre, 
We're going to finish it with a hymn that was written almost a thousand years before that one, but beautiful words which urge us to now and always make Jesus the first in our hearts. I invite you to sing, Be Thou My Vision. And a closing prayer of blessing. Jesus, our friend and our hope, you invite us to know rest in your presence. Keep us in your loving care. Surround us with your peace. Fill our hearts with your joy. Now and always. Amen.